What's up, everybody? I know we're a little late to the party, but we are back with another free agent film room. We have Jawan Taylor, 25 years old, right tackle from the Jacksonville Jaguars. He was drafted in 2019. Where's number 75? And here he is taking Joey Bosa up the arc. Things he's going to be expected and asked to do in Kansas City on the left side. This is the RGR Football Channel. My name is Daniel Harms film analyst and we're here to break down all things that have to do with the Chiefs newest left tackle again seven number 75 Jawan Taylor who is going to be asked like I said to play left tackle maybe we'll see what happens in the draft as things can change in an instant depending on who's there who's not there and we get to see him doing a nice job here again against some pretty some pretty top contender in terms of defensive ends. Uh, Demarcus Lawrence here. Watch how he's going to get into that 45 degree set. Hands on the outside, shoulders. He's coming back around right there. Those are really nice, excellent timing things that you like to see from your tackle. What I love about this is that this prevents the cornering ability. We talk about cornering a lot from defensive ends. When you're able to get around and then get down the line quickly like that, that's what we like to call as cornering. And when you have... A tackle that kind of understands to get those hands on the outside shoulder when they're trying to come back in. That's how you can prevent the cornering. And those all translate. Now, going from right to left brings about some technique, some comfort things for a, for a tackle. Switching sides at any position in terms of offensive line tackle or guard brings about a technique and a, and a comfortability process. But... He's going to have a whole offseason to work with Andy Heck. He did play 18 snaps at left tackle last year for the Jags. He also played left tackle in college. So he has some experience there. But again, when we're working with one of the best offensive line coaches in the NFL and Andy Heck, we're going to see some improvement. The biggest thing that you're going to notice about Juwan Taylor is that he's not a great run blocker. This is comes down to a lot of functional strength. He's not the strongest guy in the room. But what he does well, I think the Chiefs will be able to use. You get him out, block down, you move him, you pull him. Those are the best things that allow him to do what he's doing well. And you see he's got lots of space out here between number, between himself and number 55. And they're just going to ask him to basically block out here. Get out here and just get on a hat. And what the uh, Jaguars are doing here is a very unique way to get their running back in space. They're running this kind of pin-pull action, and they're going to create a second-level wall. So they pull Evan Ingram up through the center, up and through, or, and, and then they're going to create this wall right here on the second level. It's actually a, quite a unique formation here, but they have a double team here. You have a one-on-one -on -one block and a one-on-one -on -one block, and it's going to allow Travis Etienne to basically pick and choose where he's going to go. I, I really like seeing some unique things from Doug Peterson, so... And all that stuff, the offense that they run translate to Kansas City. They saw Juwan Taylor twice and decided they were going to bring him in. So uh, that that from that perspective, I'm sure Doug Peterson's got a little bit to do with the fact that Juwan Taylor is now in Kansas City. But again, you're not going to be asking him to do a ton of one-on-one -on -one blocking. And the biggest reason is because of that functional strength. You want to pull him. You want to have him blocked down. You want to double team. Let him get to the second level uh, screen game, all that fun stuff. Things to get him out and uses his athleticism to the fullest extent of his ability. When he's asked to block one-on-one, -on -one, we get a little bit of a, an inside look here. We have Dray Draymond Jones lined up one-on-one. -on -one. With our guy right here, it doesn't go so well. He gets a little bit out in front of his skis, and Draymond just puts hands on his shoulders and then washes him right through. So he's got a little bit of top heaviness to him in the run game when asked to go one-on-one. -on -one. They're running duo right here, so this is supposed to be a double-team duo. You know, you're going to see these guys here trying to all be double teams. Oh, excuse me, oh, that's inaccurate. But you have two double teams on the inside here. And that's what the uh, Jags are trying to accomplish here. Unfortunately, it didn't really work out well for our guy. <laughs> for our guy right here who's supposed to be blocking with Dan Arnold. The tight end there. Or this tight end, excuse me, number 84. As he motions across the formation. It's supposed to be a double there. But either way, you know, he gets out in front of his skis. Draymond Jones disengages and puts him in the dirt. So the, the running aspect for zone, the Chiefs, this really does allow them to run more zone. Now... As a puller, that's where things get interesting because you can run a lot of the gap and power schemes that the Chiefs were running last year, but instead of pulling like Andrew Wiley, you can start pulling um, Jawan Taylor 
And those are things that you can do a lot in this offense. And we know that the Chiefs like to lean into some of that power game last year with Isaiah Pacheco. I think they'll be doing the same thing this coming year. So all it's going to be all about technique for Juwan Taylor heading into Kansas City going forward. Now, this is where the big reason that Juwan Taylor's in Kansas City. You don't pay a tackle $20 million a season to run block in Kansas City. That's not what this is about. This is about your pass protection technique getting in that 45 degree um, angle block is huge for him it gets to his point first okay so what we mean by 45 degree there's really three types of ways you can set at offensive line either you're going to jump set you're going to hit a 100 vertical set which is nearly dropping all the way back with your feet down and your hips down and trying to get back like you see a uh, a cornerback backpedal that kind of thing and then there's that 45 you see how this this works out here so vertical pop and then you have that 45 degree all right get out here on that angle it gives you a little bit of time especially when you're as good getting out of your stance as Jawan taylor is and the chiefs use lots of 45 degrees uh, 45 degree sets he's going to do this right here to justin houston and again what we're going to see here is he gets to that spot before houston does right here all right so he's at the apex of his drop now he's going to try to figure out where houston is going and that's when you're going to see him turn to the sideline here and start to work get the hands on the inside he needs to be a little careful with his two hand jabs as we'll see later in the in the montage but what i really love about this is again the technique allows him to be patient he's got quick feet he has sound hips and that 45 degree is really really nice he knows he has some help on the outside with that chip block from the running back all those things really work out well for him especially when it comes to hand location now one thing that you're going to see with Juwan, especially with those 45 degree sets, is a tendency to overset, especially when you have some speedier athletic guys like a Joey Bosa, for example, on the outside. It tends to lead to some oversetting. And what I mean, what I mean by oversetting is you're going to see right here, he's going to get deep into his 45 degree set. What do you see right to the left of Juwan Taylor? A very big gap, okay? That B gap is huge. And when you have these athletic, speedier, bendier pass rushers that are very good at countering like Joey Bosa is, you're going to see some spin moves to the inside. Now, that's a hold, okay? And he's upset about not getting called on the hold. Um, but that's what you're going to end up seeing. Sometimes they're going to be cleaner. There's multiple guys in the AFC West that are going to be able to do this uh, to Juwan Taylor. So making sure he's not oversetting too much or that he has that functional athleticism to get back on and recover from an overset is key. And that's why you love to see later in the game against the same guy doing the same thing, getting a little bit overset, he's going to recover. He keeps that inside hand inside. I mean, Bosa in this entire game was upset because he thought he was getting hold, held, but it doesn't really matter. Again, when you have those arms underneath a tackle, you're not going to get called. You're not going to get called. It's just not going to happen. So right here, we see that athletic ability to recover and then allow Trevor Lawrence to find Christian Kirk in the end zone for a touchdown. So he's going to still overset right here. He's actually going to get out of the stance a little bit early, but you like to see him try to time that snap well. Here's that first jab. It's going to be up close to the face, and that second one, whoop, there it is, is what uses it. You see, he keeps his inside hand out right here, all right? Keeps it underneath of Joey Bosa. So it allows him to recover, use the force and the power created from the inside counter of Joy Bosa to keep those feet in front of him. He uses that inside hand to really kind of hook him a little bit, but not enough to get a call and keep himself in front of Joey Bosa. So all of these things really, really important to being able to be a left tackle. You're going to have to have that same kind of foot quickness, using those hands properly. And at the end of the day, when you're able to have that footwork to come outside, overset, and then reset your feet inside and get down the line, those are all really, really important to playing tackle. And that those things translate from right to left very, very well. Now, we have two plays here where my biggest concerns for him, because you have Max Crosby, you have Joey Bosa, you have um, guys that are going to be really good speed rushers in, in Denver with um, Baron Browning there too. Um, Grandy Gregory there as well that are going to have this athletic edge ab against Juwan Taylor, okay? So you're going to see him here. He's going to go for the two-hand jab. Two-hand jabs are notorious for misses, okay? Because 
both of your hands are extending in one direction. That means both of your shoulders are also extending in this direction, which in turn means most of your footwork is faced that way as well. So if you have a guy like Max Crosby, who's going to see that two hand jab coming, he's going to take a swipe at it and spin back around and Juwan Taylor's left in the, in the dust. So what I like to see from what I would like to see from him is using more of a one hand. So he's going to move to the left, use that left hand, boom, jab him, keep that inside hand free to allow himself to really kind of keep up and watch those inside counters. Those are things that I'm hoping, that I'm going to assume that Andy Heck is going to help teach him. We're going to see again right here against Micah Parsons. He does more of that. He's going to kind of catch him outside with a little bit of a jab and then when he sees that inside counter he's going to catch him in the chest and then take him to the dirt so we're going to see it right here on the right hand side boom he does get both hands up so we have both hands here but he immediately went back to the inside counter so he sees that coming he's got the footwork right there and he catches him he's a little grabby on the on the shoulder pads here but he has that recovery athleticism that we've talked about here to really catch a guy like Micah Parsons in stride. He's going speed to power to the inside counter, but he's able to really catch him up top there with his arms inside that chest, using both inside and outside hands with footwork to match, keeping himself moving right to left laterally. And that's what allows him to then put Micah Parsons away. So being able to play off of both of those things is really important. And then footwork and hand usage. That's what this comes down to. These things all translate from right to left. The problem is going to be comfort. How comfortable is he going to feel going from right to left using that drop step instead of it being right hand, right leg, it's going to be left hand. But you see, you know, catches him with that left hand inside right here on the inside counter. So pass protection at a premium in Kansas City. We're seeing the Chiefs invest highly in that and... He's going to be a huge focal point of that. We're, uh, there's a reason I use you know, Joey Bosa and Max Crosby and some of these guys that they're going to see quite a bit because all of this is important. He's going to see these guys twice a year, and that's going to be important to Khalil Mack as well in, 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 in L.A. So being able to have all of these things at his disposal are really, really important. That athletic ability he's going to have to overcome some other technical problems that two-hand jab or things that are going to have to get sorted out and worked through. But there's a reason they invested in him. There's lots of upside for a 25-year-old tackle who's now playing left-hand side in Kansas City. They believe in him. And what you're, what I'm seeing on tape is a guy who's really, really comfortable, gets in those stances, drops down very well, and he's able to create a lot of athletic advantages for this offense and for the way they can use him in ways they could not use Orlando Brown Jr. That's the big thing, okay? Big thing here. Orlando Brown Jr. does not overset and recover he can't do it he has no athletic ability to change directions that way that's going to make him a one up upgrade in pass protection over over orlando brown jr so i'm really excited to see what he is in kansas city his first season again we're seeing him against some real top level pass rushers here against max crosby against micah parsons against joey bosa so i really love what i got to see from this guy obviously there are clearly some things to work on but the upside for him is is quite large and i think the chiefs see that too i hope you guys enjoyed this please make sure you hit that sub button we are really loving what we're doing over here at rgr football and i love all the interaction that you guys consistently give the live streams are great we're going to continue to have those live mock drafts every single sunday make sure you tune into that we always have content for you guys piling up here at rgr so one more time listen in for Jawan taylor signing a four-year 80 million dollar contract in kansas city Looking forward to see what he does. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching this video from the team at RGR Football. Click these videos to see more and subscribe to RGR Football.